It is no surprising that politicians and centers of power try to manipulate public opinion to their advantage. Therefore, today we are going to look at 10 common manipulation techniques, having in mind that knowing them makes it easier to defend against them. And even if you've already heard about them somewhere, I strongly encourage you to watch till the end, as there will be a rather important bonus point at number 11. Technique number 1. Distraction The key element of social control is a constant distraction from important issues and changes made by the political elite, by giving the public opinion less relevant information, especially those that arouse strong emotions. They should also offer the opportunity for some small, easy involvement that will give the participant the impression of doing something important, at the same time distracting him from issues with a greater impact on society. Public opinion needs to be very busy so that people have no time to think. This is a very efficient method because instead of censorship and hiding the truth, it is easier to let it be overshadowed by irrelevant issues. Technique number 2. Create a problem and propose a solution. You should create a situation which will cause people to demand taking immediate action and then heroically step in to solve the problem or at least a part of it. As an example, we can mention Soviet authorities distributing food rations to politely queuing citizens, unaware of the fact that in the free world people do not have to use ration cards because they can afford food and shops are full of it. What is more, if some people or an organization make a profit from fighting a certain problem, it's in their interest to let the problem exist and pose a visible threat. Of course, it does not mean that such environments must misuse such situation, but for sure they have an opportunity to do so. Technique 3. Introduce the change gradually. You should not introduce a series of changes at once, but rather gradually and slowly familiarize the society with them. In this way, the limit of acceptable changes will slowly increase step by step. This will eventually make it possible to introduce things that were unthinkable at the beginning. It avoids widespread public outrage and people who will protest can easily be classified as fringe and conspiracy theory fanatics. Technique number 4. Announce big changes with a postponement. However, if an issue requires big changes, you should present them as a painful necessity and announce that they will be implemented in the future, in a year or two or maybe five. People find it easier to accept the vision of future sacrifice rather than immediately incurred costs. What is more, they tend to believe that it will work out somehow and perhaps this can be eventually avoided. This strategy gives more time to get used to the awareness of change and accept it. Technique number 5. Talk to people as if they were children. Much of the advertising and communication aimed at the public uses the language and reasoning used when speaking to children condescending, simplistic or even infantile, telling people that the world is simple as the world of a child. This gives people the false impression that they fully understand what's going on, which gives them the justification to take your side completely. Unfortunately, people would prefer to hear, for example, that we are good and they are bad, than the less explicit but often closer to the truth claim, it depends. Technique number 6. Focus on emotions. Whether we like it or not, we are all more or less susceptible to emotions, under the influence of which it is simply more difficult to make a reliable assessment of anything. Therefore, it is no wonder that appealing to these emotions is one of the most common methods of influencing people, especially when one doesn't want people to think too carefully about a given topic. What's more, using emotionally charged language allows you to subconsciously instill desires or anxieties in people. In this way, certain behaviors can be triggered in such a way that we may not even realize that their source comes from outside. Technique number 7. Keep people ignorant. In order to control society, people must not understand the methods of such control. Therefore, universal education should not contain information about psychology, methods of defending oneself against propaganda or details of how economic systems work, so that the techniques of control remain incomprehensible to as many controlled people as possible and so that they think that this is just the normal way of things. Technique number 8. Promote mediocrity. 
You should make the public believe that being stupid, vulgar, uneducated and only interested in satisfying urges is fashionable, up-to-date and worth following. No one will engage in self-development if they have been taught that what gives instant gratification is the best. Technique number 9. Strengthen people's sense of helplessness. You should allow individuals to believe that the system or the way society is organized do not influence their fate. In other words, state organization is not responsible for their failures and they can blame only themselves and other people. In such a situation, the person will live in an action and believe that nothing will change anyway. He will only be able to blame other people and not support changes in the political system. Technique number 10. Know people better than they know themselves. Thanks to the achievements of psychology, social engineering and extensive experience in propaganda in the 20th century, the authorities today have unusual tools for manipulating people. Additionally, they can use an enormous amount of sensitive data about our interests or choices, which we voluntarily post on the internet and which we know are willingly passed on to those in power. All this makes it possible to know a person almost better than he knows himself, which offers unusual opportunities for control. And bonus technique number 11. Ensure that your feces have expert backing, preferably in a way nobody can check it. Perhaps some of you are already familiar with these 10 rules, as they can be found on the internet as Noam Chomsky's theory of manipulation. Many authors and bloggers presented it as an analysis of the famous philosopher and linguist given its seriousness and credibility. The problem is, however, that none of them has mentioned anywhere which book or speech by Chomsky this list should come from. While investigating this topic, it turns out that this is because most probably this list is not directly offered by Noam Chomsky, especially because the oldest version of it from 2002 does not mention the authorship of the American philosopher. On the internet, one can even find information that Chomsky openly denied the authorship of this text, but again, there is no source of the statement. The only information is that it was made in reply to Gene Brickman, perhaps in the context of their book from 2009. But most people are not interested in verifying such things, even if it is a message about how not to be manipulated. And of course, the fact that Noam Chomsky probably is not the author of these principles does not really matter. It is still an informative list of techniques that are worth paying attention to and which can be observed in political discourse. And it is worth remembering because, as we have said, the first step to being resistant to manipulation is to know how these manipulations work. We appreciate you guys spending time with us here, so please go ahead and watch our other videos. Oh, and ring that notification bell so you're the first one to get the new ones.